Good morning, everyone. So today's sermon, the topic will be Got to Be Present, a Mother's Day message. Got to be present, a Mother's Day message. Now, it, 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 it is hard to understand Mother's Day after a certain point. And to preach a sermon, got to be present, but then call it a Mother's Day message. See, see, one of the things about a mother and the cross, what they have in common is, is part of what was supposed to be done is already did. Oftentimes, when we think of God and we pray, we think of the God who could do something now. We think of the God who could do something for me later. I'm going to an interview this week, so I'm going through something right now, so. But we don't think of God being the God of already. And oftentimes, so many people in this season uh, um, don't understand motherhood because motherhood is one of the earthly signs of the God of already. Because you think about it, if you're sitting here, part of mom's job is done. But now what? She, she, the Bible says seed, time, and harvest. Well, the seed was planted. And then some time went by. Now we are really the harvest of a principle of seed, time, and harvest. But the question is, but now? Because if we don't think about it in terms of but now, one of the tricks of the enemy is, is to get into our mind and we start to evaluate everything we've been through. And now I've got to evaluate and compare my mom to June Cleaver. I don't know if she quite lines up. Now I've got to think about uh, uh, how do I reconcile a day where my mom is so much greater than everybody else's mom? How do I reconcile a day where my mom is no longer here? How do I reconcile a day where my memory of my mom is of so much pain? Well, one thing that will help us is, but now. The Bible says, now faith is. Jesus got to a point where uh, uh, dealing with the Virgin Mary, she received a visitation from God. Joseph received a visitation from God. Jesus is born, the baby Jesus. We sing the song, what child is this? We sing the song, Mary, did you know? But it came a point to where as he grew up, and now it is time to walk in his calling, now he goes to the temple. Now he gets the scroll, he opens it and says, now that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Each of us need to evaluate in our life if we're going to be present now. What about now, it, 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 we can have a conversation about your upbringing, but what about now? What about now? Can we be present enough? Because there are some people that aren't present in their own marriages because of some things that happened way back when. There are some people who aren't present in their friendships because of some things that happened way back when. There are some people who aren't present on their job Oh, I'm sorry, they're there physically. See, I'm not talking about there physically. I'm talking about being present. Uh, let me see, the Bible says, as dearly beloved children be imitators of God. Let's see how God did. Adam did not talk to God about a wife. The Bible says, and God saw. That means he was present. That means he was paying attention to Adam. That means, that means he wasn't just communing with Adam in the cool of the day, but he was looking into his heart. He was feeling his emotions. He was watching. He had to even be watching the animals around Adam to know that the animals wouldn't do. Because if he didn't know about a giraffe, he could have said, Adam, but you got the giraffe. If he didn't know about uh, uh, the monkey, he would have said, Adam, a monkey. Do. But God must have knew about everything around Adam. 
uh, uh, turn with me to Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. It reads, when he was coming down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper, and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Now, I'm sorry. How do you get a Mother's Day message out of that? This is talking about leprosy. Well, well, the man with leprosy had a mother. The man with leprosy had a father. It's just not discussed in these verses. Uh, he, he, he has a past. It's just not discussed in these verses. He's got some things going on in his life. It's just not discussed in these verses. But one thing I can guarantee you is, is that when you read verse 1, it says, great multitudes followed him. There comes a point that now mom has done her job. She's, as they say, spit us out. And now we're here. Now, who are we going to choose to follow? It says, the great multitudes follow him. Now, the leper guy, the guy with leprosy, he could have stayed at the bar and talked to his friends about having leprosy. Well, he couldn't have been at the bar because if you had leprosy, you weren't allowed around the main part of town. See, see we have a choice to make to say, am I going to be present and available for Jesus to deal with some things that I need dealt with, or do I want to keep dealing with trying to figure out some answers? Or do I want to keep repeating the problem? Because I don't know if you ever noticed, but some people, they have become addicted to repeating the problem. Kind of like when, man, uh, uh, when Jesus was dealing with the man at the pool of Bethesda, he said, will thou be made whole? And the man said, the man said, but I have nobody to put me in the water. Does that matter? You're in front of Jesus. See, see, but he was so addicted. He's been telling his story all his life. But he has gotten so addicted to telling his story that even when the answer was in front of him, he still wanted to tell his story. So there comes a point that all of us are going to have to answer for what about now? Because that determines how present we are. There are some folk who say, I, but I've been hurt. Leave me alone. But then you're not present. Then you're not present. I'm going through so much. Leave me alone. Then that means you're not present. Uh, I just lost my job. Then that means you're not present. Uh, I'm having some issues with the cat. Then that means you're not present. The dog didn't want to eat this morning. Then that means you're not present. See, because the man could have easily told Jesus his story. And especially at this day and time, we have to understand the backdrop. There's usually things like leprosy, blindness. That was considered to be God's wrath upon your family. So now, now if I understand Jesus to be the son of God, but yet my disease is from God, why would I go see the Son of God? There's a lot the man had to give up on in his mind. There's a lot of thoughts that he had to erase. And we think we're going to deal with our past, deal with our present, deal with our future, without dealing with some things in our mind, without dealing with some things that we've been taught along the way. Remember, when the disciples saw the blind man, they say, who sinned? Because it was traditional that somebody in your family sinned, that's why you were blind. And Jesus said, no, no one sinned. It was just so that the glory of the Father could be revealed. I want to heal him so he could see me healing. But the man with leprosy had to give up on a lot of thoughts. He had to give up on a lot of thoughts. Now, 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 it says, when he came down, from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Because they, they sat there. See, some days we always say, if I was there back in whatever time, 
Like I think about that when I watch the old Kung Fu movie. If that was me, I would have learned all three styles and I would have got the master. But, but really, can we really say that? Because some days is our time to prove it. Because you got to remember when it says, when he came down, when he came down, they've been at this for a while. See, this is after the Sermon on the Mount. We think the Sermon on Sunday is long. This is after the Sermon on the Mount. Sermon on the Mount, about three chapters. See, I only read a couple of verses. Jesus is up there for like three something chapters, and the man is still around. That's why I say you got to be present. We are in such a rush, only around God's people. But if we're not present, yeah, what's the greatest way for me to honor my mother is to be present. Is to be present. Because for me to be present is honoring the fact that I'm going to make those nine months pay off. Being present is the way I'm going to honor the pain that you went through. See, see, sometimes we don't realize a mother represents God's cynicism. Okay? Let me give you an example. Now, most people will say this is gross. Jesus spit in the dirt. Gross, you shouldn't spit. And then he rubbed his finger on it. That's gross. And then he wiped it on the man. I'm just telling you what the Bible said. And the man received his sight. But now, you can't tell me mothers don't do that. Whatever else, you should lick her thumb, wipe it <laughs> off. I mean, Dad's going to Home Depot to get Gooby gone. Mom said, I got Gooby gone right there. <laughs> See, I mean, God is seen in a mother. Just like you ever know, Dad's in the delivery room are tend to be a little bit more honest. Like, oh, man, what happened? Man, I don't know. Mom said, oh, my precious baby. They don't hand the baby to the dad till after they clean him up. Mom says, no, give me my baby. Now, I don't care. I don't care about all the stuff on him. I don't care. This is my baby. The dad's like, hey, this is that. I can build a house, but I can go to war, but you know, you have to convince a dad to be in the delivery room. You have to convince a dad to be able to handle seeing the blood. But not a woman. See, we sing, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood for me. But most men are squeamish of blood. You ever notice, uh, 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 one thing about going to the VA, you see the toughest men, big, tall, short, and you know most of them, you know, especially the older ones, they fought in war and you know, they, they've been to Vietnam and in the trenches and, 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 and you go up, the gold team goes to the right, the, the uh, silver team goes up to the left, everybody's tough. The pharmacy is downstairs on the left, everybody's tough. The x-ray room is down the hall to the right, everybody's tough until they get to the smallest room in the VA, which is the room that gets your shots. The room with the smallest instrument called a needle. And they're all shaking. They weren't shaking at the pharmacy. They weren't shaking at check-in. But it's something about going, but you got a woman. <laughs> can, can suffer the pain of childbirth. Can suffer the pain of, of carrying this awkward weight for nine months. The pain, the pain, the pain. You know, uh, 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 one of my buddies said, you know, uh, uh, sometimes we don't deal with the importance of a mother, but when you think of Jesus, you think, you think, the job of a mother only needs to be done by one woman, but the job of a father needs to be done by two. <laughs> See, Jesus had God the Father and Joseph the Father. See, but Mary can take care of it. See, because sometimes we don't understand what a mother represents, but, but, but we get caught up in the not understanding there's a part of their job that is done. There's a part of their job that is done. Just like no one taught you how to be a child and grow up, nobody taught them how to be a mom. Should have. There's instructions in the Word of God, but we don't get to that point. So, so, but we can't argue the point that the job of getting us here is done. The job of whoever the man with leprosy of his parents, 
is done. That role of getting him on earth is done. Because he wouldn't be able to present himself to Jesus for healing unless he had been there. And without his mother, he wouldn't be here. See, see we have to understand that unless we really understand motherhood, it is hard for us to come into our Christian faith and understand the doctrines of Christianity. The doctrine of seed, time, and harvest. That's why the Bible says the family is a picture of the church. Uh, uh, two people get together, they become one, and then they have some bad, I mean some kid. Okay, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, there are three that bear reckoning in heaven, these three are one. And out of those three becoming one, birth the nation of Israel. Out of the three becoming one, birth the church. See, because the three became one, now Jesus can have a church. Jesus can have a bride now. So, so when we think about motherhood, I just want us to understand that it is really a role that has pain built into it. It is really a role that has a certain anointing built into it. And all of us would have to admit, there's something about the soothing words of a mother. Now, 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 two things that we know cost a lot in the Bible. The Bible says we were bought with a great price. That's one. The second thing that we know cost a lot in the Bible is wisdom. Because the Bible tells us what uh, uh, what to relate her to uh, uh, the jewels, the rubies, the diamonds. But then the Bible turns around and almost interchanges wisdom with woman. Yeah, because woman's greatest argument is how dumb men are. Well, I got news for you. That was part of the rib. See, when, when God took out the rib, he took out part of our intelligence and gave it to the woman. That's why a woman is considered to be wisdom. That's why God looked at Eve and said, it is not good for Eve. Now, I'm sorry, he said that to Adam. It is not good that man should be alone. See, because he knew you get four guys and they go to Vegas. It would be amazing if they all made it back. You get four women that go to Vegas, they're all coming back. None of them are going to be broke. None of them are going to be in trouble. That's just, just a good trip. Guys, see, it was a guy who said what happened in Vegas. <laughs> what not the woman that said that? Because for the most part, she didn't do anything that she can't talk about when she gets back. You ever notice, you know, a military guy, every story starts off with, remember that night? It was always that night. And it always ended up in jail. Now, how many women have ever told a story that started with that night in jail? See, see, so, so this is the beauty of why we need each other, because a woman represents wisdom, and without a woman, man just goes in searching. You know, just goes in searching. You know, like women say, oh, oh why won't he ask for direction? He don't need to. The wife is going to hound him until he makes a left turn. So he doesn't need to stop. So... We have to think about the fact that when we deal with Mother's Day, the reason we're all here, the best thing we can do is make a choice today to follow Jesus. As it came down to mind, follow Jesus, follow Jesus. The multitudes got greater. The greatest disrespect to mothers, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to get ready to close. The greatest disrespect to mothers is the empty seats. That's the greatest insults to mothers. The fact that I was in part of the role of God to get you here, you're not going to choose the very God that used me to get you here. The very God that when the plane was going down, he's an old God. The very God that when the car was spinning on the 405, when the truck hit you, he said, oh Lord. But the empty seat. The empty seat. The greatest disrespect to a mother is the empty seat. Because really, motherhood wasn't for her. 
<coughs> the birth of us wasn't for us. It was all for the glory of God. And we cannot say that we don't realize that. Because, like I say, in the times of trouble, see, we start off here at the altar, where you take this in, and then we don't come back until the tongue cleaves to the roof of our mouth. The greatest disrespect to a mother. Because, really, the reason seed time and harvest exist was for us to get here and then make the choice now that we are present to accept Christ as Lord and Savior of our life. That's why I say we've got to be present. We've got to be present. The greatest Mother's Day message I can say is because you're here. Mom did her part. You're here. Now what? Now what? Jesus had Mary as a mother, but it didn't matter when he picked up the scroll and said, now that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So I'll leave you with that. Be present, celebrate your mothers, but also think of the mothers as the holders of pain that God only gave them the ability to endure. God bless you.